Hello and welcome to Europe 1100 and this is using the European map mod. If you would like to check out the mods that I'm using there is a comprehensive list in the description. We're going to be playing as the Nordic faction here but there are many to choose from as you can tell and now we're going to head in. All right so obviously I want to try to create a Viking here so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to make him a little bit a uh, little bit a little bit more muscular a little bit taller as you might expect and then we're just going to go for Riding and two-handed, because as you may expect as well, we're going to be creating a two-handed based character that also is relatively decent at smithing and, and throwing and all that wonderful stuff. And I may actually want to go for some charm skill too. Not entirely sure if we can actually make that work. Maybe we can. Mm, I kind of want to do this though. Kind of want to get the one-handed and two-handed and everything. Going to start at age 40, I think. Starting at age 40 might be pretty good because then we have a little bit of an easier time in the early game. And we are still able to have children in the in those first 10 years, I believe. Or at least I think that male characters are still able to have children up until that point. Anyway, we're going to go for two-handed axe. Big two-handed axe. And a wonderful, well, weird-looking color scheme for some reason and we'll just call him bear tilt as you may expect I mean, who are we going to make him otherwise uh it's going to be barney i guess it's going to be barney it's been a while and we'll go for what 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 why does that okay that's kind of weird <laughs> not entirely sure what the difficulty was doing right there but anyway auto allocate clan member perks and we're going to be playing on banner lord straight up no differences whatsoever here and we're going to be going straight on in and now let us make sure and hope to cross our fingers that the nearby town of Stockholm, as you can see, is going to have some wonderful troops for us. Oh, it has only five. Okay, not not best pleased about that, but we can hopefully just recruit some more from the nearby villages. And uh, bear in mind, we actually start with zero food. Okay. <laughs> well, that's interesting. All right. So, yeah, I'm just going to buy a little bit of food here. And I think what I want to do first is we probably want to do a tournament, right? We probably want to do a tournament. So let's go into the arena and ask the tournament master where one is. That's going to be extremely important for us. So, yes, thank you very much. I don't have any more questions. How many? Uh, okay. Uh, oh, Prague. Uh, okay. Well, that's, mm, yeah, that's a little bit too far away for my liking, isn't it? Okay. Hmm. Maybe there's going to be one in the near future. But at the moment, we're probably not going to get very lucky in that regard. So I'm probably going to have to just uh, wing it and try to fight as many looters as I can get my hands on. All right, so first of all, we do want to spec some points, don't we? So let's go and... Uh, should we go for handling? Yeah, yeah, go for handling. We want to make sure that we're super fast, don't we? We definitely want to make sure we're super fast. Let's go for two points in focus. We want a point in medicine as well. And we want to go for another point in Vigor here. We want two points in Endurance. And then we want to go for, well, some more Athletics, of course. And some more in Riding too. Fantastic. All right, so we have some Looters over there that we could potentially fight. I kind of want to, but I feel like we don't have enough troops. So I think what we need to do is just head on over here, get another, another five, and then we should be able to tackle them if they're still around. Ah, here they are. Fantastic. So we should be able to... What? They have a ship, but we don't? Are you serious? Come on. All right. Well, hopefully I'm going to be able to... Wait a minute. So they can go across the ocean, but I can't. Well, that's funny. Okay. Well, maybe they're going to... Are they going to uh, Are they gonna get back onto land? Because if they get back onto land, then I could obviously fight them. But as it stands, it doesn't seem like that's even possible, as you can see right here. Nope. Doesn't seem like it. All right. Well, that's... <laughs> that's good to know I suppose that's good to know anyway I guess we'll just recruit some more people and uh, I now have only 600 gold remaining so I'm a little bit worried now because we are not getting into a fight early on even though we did see some looters but unfortunately they are not able to be accessed because they are um, you know uh, <laughs> riding the ocean waves as it were and we don't have the ability to do that just yet Nice. Okay, there we go. We actually got into a fight. Wonderful. And you may have also noticed that I have enabled my skill gains in the text log uh, finally. Because uh, I actually thought that they disabled that completely because they wanted it to be more of a, I don't know, immersive experience, I suppose. And uh, I thought that you couldn't re-enable it. But I found a setting in the options which enables that. So that's actually really nice. Because that means that I'll now be able to see what's actually happening when I level up really, really dramatically. And we can, 
you know, be excited about a, an amazing headshot or something that is going to happen potentially in the future where I just go, oh yes, look at that, I got a massive amount of riding skill from that, and now I'm getting killed by thrown weapons. Yes, isn't that wonderful? Anyway, I can tell my infantry just to charge in here. Hopefully I'm not going to die. I really would prefer not to die. Nice. Okay, good good little hit right there. And I'm just trying to basically distract the enemy as much as possible just so that they can run after me a little bit and our forces can tackle enemies one by one or in very small groups. That's basically what I was attempting to do here most of the time. And there's a nice little hit to finish off the looters. And look, look at this. this. This is what I'm talking about. Even with the massive amount of distraction that I did here, we still ended up losing <laughs> one troop. Which obviously is not exactly great. But anyway, we can now rec uh, recruit recruit this hat. Yes, we can now equip that hat, is what I meant to say. That sounds pretty good to me. And now we should be able to uh, move on and maybe find... Yes, more looters. There are more looters over there. Fantastic. Okay, so do we want to go for archers or do we want to go for spearmen? The problem with spearmen is that they're going to be absolutely useless in the early game. That's the thing, because we're not going to be up against any cavalry very early on at all. And as we know, the AI is absolutely abysmal at using spears. So I'm thinking we're probably going to be leveling these guys up into archers for the moment, even though Nordic archers may not be the best solution here for us. But... I kind of have to do something, otherwise we're going to be in a situation where we just can't, you know, make any headway whatsoever, and um, we might we may not even be able to achieve victory in these cases. So, uh, for example, I don't even know whether we can win against fifteen. <laughs> oh, that's such a terrible feeling, isn't it? Uh, that is such a terrible feeling. But maybe we can actually fight these eight, and then once we've leveled up a couple more of our troops, we might be able to you know, achieve a little bit more and go in against those 15. I'm just trying to be a bit careful here because as you can see, I am I am pretty damaged. And uh, yeah, they're a bit too close for my liking as well, which is kind of annoying. So let's actually just do, the, do this. There we go. Let's move these guys into a loose formation as well. I'm going to need to get out my throne weapons and try to do some quick damage. Nice. Oh, that was a neck shot as well. Great. Love that. Oh, that was a headshot. Great. Okay, I need more of that, please, Barney. I do. I need more of that. Okay, let's tell my infantry to charge in. Hopefully my archers will start actually doing something. They seem to be, um... Not doing much. <laughs> not doing much at all. Uh, yeah, so just so you know, I have taken a brief look at the troop trees before I created this series. And I have found out that the peasant troops are remarkably mediocre. And that is, that is obviously very much on purpose. They are very much intending that to be the case. Because noble troops should be, in my opinion at least, much better than their peasant variant. Because otherwise the, the greatest thing that you can do as a player is just amass peasant units overall and you're going to be able to overwhelm the noble units. However, the noble units are so good that they should technically be able to survive pretty much any situation at this point. I will show you them when we come across them. I think I might be able to actually... Is this a town right there? I'm actually not entirely sure if that's a town or not. Let's actually just have a quick look. Uh, I do need to buy some food though, so let me just buy that real quick. Okay, so we can recruit some more people here. This is not... Uh, that That is a town, actually. Because uh, otherwise we would have been able to get noble units from this particular village. But let me just show you the troop tree real fast. So this is the peasant troop tree, as you can tell. Uh, they only go to tier 4, which is quite surprising. But that's exactly the reason why I say noble units are placed with a much higher priority for you as a player. You really want to get the noble units as best as you can. So you need to have a strong economy to be able to support their wages... Otherwise, you're going to be stuck with peasant units. And even then, the peasant units are, well, pretty mediocre, as you can see. Their skills are about 100 in combat, and that's it. And that's going to be harsh. It's going to be pretty harsh. As you can see, these guys are using U bows, which are actually pretty good, as you can see. They have 94 accuracy and 69 damage, which is quite nice, actually, all things considered. And they even have really good bows when they get to tier 3. 
So their, their equipment is good. Don't get me wrong. Their equipment is good, but their overall statistics are not in comparison to the Noble variant. And I will show you the Noble variant soon enough. Let's go in against nine. Can I go in against nine without getting those 15 to bring a friend? Hopefully. Uh, drawing speed with... Yeah, I think I'll go for the drawing speed. That sounds like a good idea for me. And yeah, we're just going to try to go against the nine here. Once again, all we're trying to do is just level up some of our troops. The problem, though, with doing this is it's actually going to be detrimental overall to my wages and how much money I'm able to um, make, you know, um, most of the time. Because here's the thing. If I do this and level up my troops, I am inevitably going to have to pay more for the, uh, well, for the upgrades and for the higher tier of troop. So it's going to be maybe not so good. Maybe, you know, a little bit disadvantageous for me to do this, but... I kind of need to do something because otherwise we're not going to be able to tackle mountain bandits and any other higher form of bandit if we need to do that. And we are also, of course, getting quite a lot of loot as a result of fighting these guys as well. And I think considering we've taken zero casualties in this particular battle, we should be able to tackle the 15 strong bandit party nearby to us as well. So I'm thinking we'll probably do that in just a moment. And of course, we might even get some of the tier three, uh, tier three archers to level up too. And I'm not entirely sure what the tier two archers are using right now. But yes, as you can see, they have now started to level up. I will start leveling up the uh, spearmen now. And the tier two archers, what do they actually use? They use ranger bows, which are 83 accuracy. So yes, there is a massive jump in equipment level from tier two to tier three because they uh, once they get to tier three they have these bows that are 11 accuracy better than what they were using beforehand which really makes a significant difference it really does anyway there is a 15 strong yep here they are all right here we go this is going to be basically t this is our do or die situation right now i'm at 37 percent hp i need to win this battle if i do not win this battle then we are probably not going to be able to afford anything else. And I will have to, well, obviously I'm going to be defeated by that point. And, well, money won't really matter then, will it? No, it won't. Um, we have plus, plus 30 to two-handed skill if I were to place myself as a captain here. None of my troops have two-handed, so I'm not going to be placing myself in the captain role, just so you know. Because uh, I know some people might tell me, hey, you should put your, your, yourself in the captain role because, you know, you're going to be much, um, you know, much more likely to achieve victory and things like that. But yeah, that's the thing. We don't have any skills to actually... Uh, I really hate having a sumter horse. I really hate having a sumter horse. I really do. Uh, are we going to win this? Yeah, we're going to win. Uh, but no thanks to me. That, that's all I can say. No thanks to me. But that's the point. Having a Sumter Horse early on, and this is the first thing that I will tell you because this is just literally one of those things that I am absolutely the best at. Okay? And usually I'll tell you that I'm the worst at pretty much everything. But this is what I'm best at. Going and running straight into the enemy and getting killed. Yes, that is what I am very good at. So, yeah, if, if you need an expert, you know where to come. You know, you, you can come to me and I'll say to you, yes, the best thing you can do is hold W, aim towards the opponent. Boom, there you go. That's <laughs> I'm obviously joking. You don't want to do that. Anyway, we can hopefully make our way over to the nearby town. Maybe I'll be able to sell some stuff and I might actually... Get lucky with a tournament? No, not get... No, no, okay, apparently I'm not getting lucky with a tournament. I'm sad now. All right, yep, very, very sad. Ooh, there is actually a companion here. He is a scout companion. Yeah, maybe a good idea, but I don't have enough money for him. I really don't. I don't have enough money for him, so not going to really be happening anytime soon, but I can sell some stuff, and hopefully that's going to allow me to live for a little bit longer. It actually does. It actually does seem like I'm going to live for a little bit longer. That's pretty cool. Okay, so apart from 
me selling this. I'm thinking that what I'd like to do, where are we now? Uh, okay, okay, uh, let me see now. I'd like to, I have a feeling that I should, hmm, I'm gonna buy some more food here. There we go, 190 only. It's not that expensive. It's not that expensive. So what I'd like to do is I would like to go over to Norway here. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Uh, especially considering we have very few... We've got a lot of tier 3 archers now, actually. So we might get lucky. Uh, but the, the problem is, um, when you go close to the mountains, there are going to be mountain bandits. And mountain bandits are obviously much more difficult than you might imagine. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if we're going to be okay here, but we'll, 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 we'll try, right? We'll try and we'll see what happens. Okay, so let's have a look. What do I want to go for here? We probably want to go for smithing at some point, but not just yet. I guess we'll go for some more throwing skill. Okay, got to be careful. Got to be careful. Don't want to get pounced on by any mountain bandits. I'm actually surprised that there aren't any around here for some reason. It's a bit weird. All right, so let's actually go in here. And yeah, as you can see, look at this. <laughs> this is actually fantastic. This is really, this has really worked out quite well for me. Okay, so as you can see, the prices of grain and fish are exponentially larger than when we were in Sweden. Um, so yeah, we're actually going to be selling this for a significant amount of profit. I'm gonna sell all the grain actually. And I'm gonna sell all of this as well. We have three days worth of food. Look at that, 561 gold. No idea how much I actually spend, but we can also buy some tools here. Look at this, I can actually buy some tools here. It, it, this is the thing. I wasn't actually planning on doing any trade in this particular series, because uh, you know I'm not specking in trade or anything like that, but it actually seems like maybe it would be a good idea. As you can see there, I gained six skill points in trade. So now what we're going to do is, I can't, yes, I know I can't walk on water, Barney. Are you serious? Thank you. Okay, yes. Um, yeah, he thinks because of the auto pathing, he's thinking that we have a boat, but we do not. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to just go around the old fashioned way, aren't we? Okay, so now I'm going to go back over here and I should technically be able to sell my tools for a significant profit. I think I am 15, huh? That's actually a lot. That's actually a huge profit, in actual fact. Okay, very nice. I should have specced into some trade skill, shouldn't I? That really would have made a huge difference. Oh well, never mind. Maybe we can do that in the future, who knows. Uh, but yeah, otherwise we'll go for some charge damage, I suppose. Or maneuver maneuverability, maybe? Mm, uh, I'm thinking, actually, you know what? Let's go, for, let's go for nimble steed, because we are going to inevitably get some noble units at some point, and they are mounted, just so you know. The Nordic units are mounted, the noble ones. And um, having plus 30 riding skill to those guys is probably going to make a pretty big difference. So yeah, we're just going to do that. Anyway, I'm going to go straight on into the arena here because I'd like to ask where there is a tournament going on. Okay, yeah, that's not going to work. That's way too far away. I haven't actually shown you the map yet either. I probably should show you the map before we you know, progress any further because it would probably be good for you to know exactly the scope of this entire place. As you can see, this is Scandinavia right here. Obviously, we've got uh, England and Ireland and Scotland. Then we have you know, Spain and uh, North Africa here, uh, Italy, so on and so forth. And then obviously, you know, all the others. And there's, there's just so many. <laughs> there's a huge amount of different things. Ah, okay, so wait a minute. I can actually see from, from distance where there are tournaments. I had no idea that that was the case. Okay, I thought I had to be closer. But apparently there is one in Paris at the moment, which would be pretty fantastic. There's one here apparently as well. Um, but that's a bit surprising because I wouldn't have expected that at all. But apparently there is. There's also a quest here. Rival gang moving in. Uh, okay, yeah, probably not going to be doing anything with him. But yeah, we can potentially buy more of this grain. And we can sell it at Oslo for a significant profit. I'm thinking we're going to we're going to buy quite a lot of it. Let's just buy let's buy let's buy 35 and then we'll probably sell 30 of it at least 
and then we'll be able to move on from there. And maybe, who knows, maybe we'll come across a couple of, um, uh, yeah, come across a couple of bandits or something like that, a couple of mountain bandits or something, who knows. Um, and then maybe we can use the ferry station to get over to the mainland, and then we can, you know, try to find a tournament somewhere around there. But I'm thinking that right now, this is, oh no, it's under siege. Are you serious? No, it's under siege. Uh, actually, no, this isn't even bad, actually. Surprisingly enough, you may think, oh yeah, it's under siege, that's really, really bad, because you have a bunch of stuff that is currently being eaten by your troops. Well, yeah, that is the bad thing. However, when it's not under siege, they're not going to have any food here. And it's going to, um, well, make it a lot easier for me to, uh, you know, do a little bit of trading. And as you can see, look at this. I am literally going to be selling this stuff for 54. Look at this. This is absolute insanity. Okay, so we're gonna just sell. Um, we're gonna sell quite a bit. We have three. How much day? How many days worth? Four days worth of food remaining. And I should probably buy some tools. As you can see, I can actually sell the tools for a significant amount. So I will do that. And we're still just gonna. We're still gonna be making 434. But we're gonna be investing it forward. You see, gonna be investing it forward in the tools. And we're still gaining uh, five skill points. I'm so surprised that we're gaining such a significant amount, to be honest. Usually when I trade, I never get that amount, but we just found a wonderful little uh, loophole here, which is really making a significant difference. It really is. There is a bunch of looters there, but there's only four of them. I don't really feel like it's necessary to fight them. However, there is a tournament now going on here, which is absolutely wonderful. So we're just going to sell these tools for a thousand. I actually don't think that that was that much of a that much of a gain, if anything, actually. I don't think that was a gain at all, to be honest. Anyway, there is a tournament going on here, and there is a leather tabard available. All right, so I'm not really looking forward to this too much. I know what you may be thinking. Oh, oh, don't you like tournaments? Don't you like tournaments, reformist? Uh, and I'm like, uh, yeah, well, I do. I do like tournaments. However, when you're up against Nords, you kind of don't really like it that much because they are actually really good at what they do. And I am not. Or maybe not. Maybe I'm actually okay. Oh, we're, we're, we're seemingly doing some pretty good damage here. Nice little head head thrusts. <laughs> head thrusts. Oh, yeah, sounds like a great plan. Do I have a secondary weapon? No, I do not have a secondary weapon. That's also something that's kind of uh, making me a little bit um, hesitant to do something here. As you can see, we're just getting absolutely murdered. We do not have another weapon. Can you help me out, green team member? Thank you. Okay, we can actually get on this mount here. But this is, this is really, really harsh for them to not give me a secondary weapon as a, uh, you know, with, with, a, with a spear or a polearm. And now this is exactly what's happening right here. Well, we're going to win this, I think. Not unless... Th oh, no. Are you serious? Please, green team, please do not lose. I think we might be through anyway. Um, yeah, yeah, our team qualified. But you can see just how difficult it actually is because we were given a spear. And, um, well, oh dear. Uh, okay, this might be bad. Oh no, please don't. Oh, okay, don't shoot me, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. I'm just gonna run around here. Oh, nice. Okay, good hit, good hit. Okay, we finally got some skill points. I mean, really, it's taking me a huge amount of time to get any skill points whatsoever here. Okay, we're up against a Huskarl. That is one of their highest tier peasant units. Okay, that was not too bad. A nice little bit of dodging, a nice little bit of dancing right there. And this is one of their noble units, as far as I can tell. And we have thrown weapons. So this might very well work out quite nicely. However, this fellow might have really good thrown weapons as well. Seems like he's actually not doing that well with them, so should be fine. I should actually be able to kill him before he even reaches me. Nice. <laughs> that, was, that was the easiest round of the entire... Uh, entire ordeal, which is quite funny. Anyway, there we go. We did get the leather tabard, which is going to be an amazing upgrade for us. It's really going to make a huge difference. It has like 18 armor or something like that. 18 body armor. Um, what is it now? Six arm armor. Uh, I think it has like seven leg armor or something like that. I'm not entirely sure on the stats. Um, yeah, there we go. Something like that. There we go. And we can now equip that straight away. It could potentially be sold for 600 gold, but I actually have pretty decent gold because of the amount of little... Uh, 
you know, little uh, tricky, tricky little trades that we've been doing. So not too bad. Anyway, we can actually buy some additional stuff once again. Going to buy a bunch of grain. Uh, capacity is exceeded already. Can I buy a Sumter horse for a cheap price? Not really. I guess we'll just buy one just to kind of increase our, our carry capacity somewhat. And then I will be making my way over once more to Oslo um, because we might as well take advantage of the demand that is currently available there because if not, then someone else is going to and they're going to make an absolute bundle. And there is, oh, there is a tournament going on here too. Okay, wow. We're, oh, it's 66 now. Why? Is it because they don't have any grain? No, they don't have any grain. I'm actually really surprised. Why is there no one with a caravan coming over here? This is very strange. Okay, look at this. We can buy tools for 68 and we can sell them at, I, I, I don't know where this is, Ansire? Ansire? I, I, I don't know. I don't know where that is. So we're going to buy them until they get to 75, I guess. Uh, mm, I kind of want to make quite a lot on these. So we're just going to sell that. Then we'll just sell some of our grain. And we're still going to be paying quite a bit. But we are paying for an investment because we're investing in the tools. You see what I mean? You're investing in the tools. So we're going to hopefully make a good amount of profit here. Okay, we gained a level. Do I want to spec into trade? Now is the time. Do I want to spec into trade skill? I'm not entirely sure. Technically, if I want to theme thematically role play as a Viking, they were actually pretty good at trading. So <laughs> thematically, it might be a good idea to do that. Um, yeah, why not? Fine, fine. Let's do it. And let's, shall we do a little bit in social as well? I don't know whether I really want to go for it that hard. Do I want to go for it that hard? No, probably not. Wouldn't mind going for some more endurance, though. Or maybe some more control, because I would like to level up my throne weapons quite a bit. We could also go for roguery skill. Ooh, ah, there's so many things that I want to go for. Let's just go for control for the moment. I want to be relatively good at throne weapons. Where is Ansire? Let me actually see if I can find where that is, and then we'll see. Um, let me see now. Where is it? It is far. Oh, are you serious? Wait a minute. Where is this thing? Why did I? Why, why do I have information about this place that is extremely far away from where I am? It's all the way over here. Are you serious? Okay, yeah, that is. Um, well, how am I supposed to get over there? I don't know. That's going to take me a long time to get over there, but I suppose we have some tools now. So if we do come across some place that is buying them for around 200, then we should be okay. Let's just wait for a little bit of time and then we'll head into this tournament as well. We're going to get a harpoon. Oh, now that's a thrown weapon that I would love. Thank you. These are absolutely amazing. Probably one of my favorite thrown weapons to use just purely for the fact that they have so much pure damage. And we're hopefully going to be able to do something here to win. They're giving me a pretty nice start here with my axe. Ugh. Okay, not, not so good now. Can you actually do something, red team? A little bit more, please? Just, just a little bit more? What is he actually doing right now? This guy is one of the most... <laughs> Uh, I don't want to insult him, okay, but he was kind of useless at that point. He was literally just like, okay, I'm going to swing randomly. And I was moving pretty slowly backward, you know. I was backpedaling pretty slow, you know. I was trying to trying to get the guy into range, but he was just continually swinging rather than moving forward without swinging to increase his movement speed and then swing when he's in range. But, oh well, never mind. That didn't really happen. Oh, finally. Okay, so we've actually been given an alternate weapon here for our polearm, which is great. So we can actually do something real nice here. These mercenary units seem to die very fast as well, which I very much appreciate. Really did not want to fight someone that was going to be super, super difficult here. Although, hello, Huskarl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, look at that guy. My, my fellow literally just ran in over there. That is not going to be very good. Okay, here we go. Oh, thank... Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. 
Thank goodness. Thank goodness they were already injured. That's all I can say, because that's literally... Um, I, I mean, I think I would have been okay, because I could have used one of their bodies to, you know, shield me from the other one, to try and prevent them from getting any kind of good weapon arc on me. But, yeah, you know, we're, we're fine. We're fine. And hopefully I will be able to... Yes, there we go. Eliminate the mercenary soldier. Now we are up against a mercenary rogue. Really? I thought the Nordic Berserker would definitely win. That's very surprising. Oh, and this is going to be an easy mode victory right here. Okay. Uh, there's nothing really that I can say about this apart from the fact that these are super easy headshots right now. And that's it. Game over, sir. Game over. Yes, there we are. Absolutely perfect. And we got the harpoon. Now, obviously, as I say, the harpoon is one of my favorite thrown weapons. And you'll see exactly the reason why when we get into our first battle. It's going to be so incredibly strong. When you shoot it or throw it at anyone... If they don't have their shield up, they're dead. That's it. It's just a, a pure instant kill. Even if you get a body shot, unless they're maybe the most heavily armored unit, you're probably going to be, you know, completely fine. So anyway, we're going to go for... What do we want here? Why does this have such a weird icon, by the way? Why does that have a weird icon? That doesn't look right. Anyway, uh, we'll go for movement speed, I suppose. I don't really want the hit points, so we'll go for the movement speed. And we're otherwise going to go for plus 20% handling to one-handed weapons. I think that sounds like a pretty good idea in comparison to the longer shield bash stun durations. I think that sounds nice. And otherwise, we've got a pretty good start for our series in Europe 1100. And if you want to check out the mods, then obviously there is a whole bunch of links in the description. And otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.